Let's check out how you can use the Gubrick web app to assess student work that had been distributed using Doctopus, which is a Google add-on written by Andrew Stillman of New Visions for Public Schools. The last step of Doctopus takes you to these assignment tools, and one of the options there is to attach a Gubrick. You can see on my Doctopus spreadsheet here, I've already got the links to all of my student work, and let's just pretend that they've already finished their assignments or been working on them, and now it's time to assess them. First step is to click on Attach Gubrick. This pulls up a little window that describes what you need to do to get started. So all you'll have to do is walk through these steps in order to get yourself going and update the new Gubrick extension that will allow you to launch the web app so you can assess your student work. So I'll just install that. Once it's been successfully installed, you see the Gubrick icon in your Omnibox. You can close all these windows and click the Step 2 link to authorize the web app. Now it's time to select your rubric. Here I've got my rubric set up as a simple spreadsheet. I've got my point values, or you could use descriptors across the top, and your different categories down the side, and with all the descriptions filled in. I need to select that rubric. It does a quick analysis of your spreadsheet to make sure it's in the proper format, and if everything's okay, you attach the rubric to the assignment. When it's completed, you can close the pop-up window, and you notice that the document Doctopus assignment tools have changed. So you have the writing rubric attached, which is the name of the rubric I'm using, and I can change the rubric and have a couple other options here. Back on my Doctopus spreadsheet, if I scroll over to the right here, you can see I have ideas, organization, voice, word choice, all of those match up with the categories that I'm using to assess on my rubric. It's created a second tab here for rubric scores. This becomes like a log, so every time you assess any bit of student work, it'll add a new row to this. Cool, we should be good to go now. So let's start assessing our student work. So I'm just going to work my way down. I'll start here with Jane Doe as my first student. Pop open the link to her work. And you can see that she started to write her little essay about cupcakes. Since we've installed Gubrick, the icon is in the Omnibox. Now when I click on it, it's going to launch the web app for Gubrick. It'll open you up a new tab with this new couple panes at the top. Now the first time you run this, you'll notice here at the top there's this gray bar that's asking for access to your microphone. Make sure you click Allow, so always check that. After you've allowed access to your microphone, you see the assessment panels above the student work. So down here at the bottom, there's that student work. And across the top, I have two panes. The left pane is my rubric, and it's split out here. On the right side of the pane is a place for us to leave written comments and also audio comments, which I'll get to in a little bit. So now as I'm looking at Jane's work, I can see it and scroll through it fully, and I have this permanent box here at the top that allows me to assess along the rubric. So I can click. Alternatively, if you already know the descriptors pretty well, if you've assessed a few of these, you can just type the number and hit tab between these text entry boxes at the top. So double check them, I can see that they've been shaded properly. I leave my written comments over at the side here. You notice a little pop-up here, it says the scores have temporarily saved, so you're not going to lose your work, even if it's taking you a while to assess the work. Of course, I can make full use of the commenting features within Google Docs in order to leave feedback for the student as well if I wanted to comment in line. There's a checkbox here so you can email the test scores, and you see it's nice, it's put the student's name right there so you can keep track of who you're working on. If I'm just assessing against the rubric and leaving general comments and inline text comments, click the Submit button. If I scroll down a little bit, you should see here in a second, 
that the rubric has been pasted into the Google Doc, and this works only with Google Docs. Uh, it will not paste the rubric into other Google Doc formats like slides and drawings. You can still assess using Google, but it just won't paste it into the doc itself. If I jump back over to my spreadsheet, and I scroll over to the right here, you see that Jane has her scores and comments entered there. I look at my rubric scores log, and it's also been entered on that sheet. When I'm done assessing Jane, I click Next, and it takes me to the next student. Still within the same web app, I don't even have to go back to my spreadsheet, and now I'm on Jenny's. Now for Jenny, I want to leave her an audio comment. So in the top right, you see there's this little recording tool. Just click on the record button. Jenny, you're off to a really good start. Why don't you take a look at some of your conventions, though? Remember what we talked about in class last time, and let me know. You can play it back to double check. Jenny, you're off to a really good start. Why don't you take a look at some of your conventions, though? And you have the option to either delete it if you made a mistake, or what's really cool is it saves to Google Drive, so I'm going to click that. It's going to upload it to your Google Drive, and I'll show you where here in a little bit. There's the new audio comment box that's embedded right into this assessment panel at the top. I'm going to submit that. My rubric is pasted, but then down here at the bottom, it's almost like a footnote, and there's a hyperlink to that file that's saved in my drive. So students will have access to this. And they can play it. Jenny, you're off to a really good start. Why don't you take a look at some of your conventions, though? Pretty cool. If I go back to my Gubrick spreadsheet, I see that Jenny's marks have been entered and any comments as well have been added to our log. After I've assessed all the work, I can make use of the other Doctopus tools, like being able to embargo the docs so it gives students view only access rights, so then I can go in and assess it without any opportunity for students to go in and edit their work. But let's say I wanted to reassess their work, so let's just go back into Jenny. If I just click on the link from within Doctopus, I'm not able to assess it from here. Remember, I have to launch the Gubrick web app. The scores that I submitted last time are up here. So let's just say I'm going to go through and let's make a couple changes so she improved. In my audio comments, I can see there's a little link for the audio comments from the last scoring. They're also still linked here down below. So I've given her some new grades. I can even leave her a new audio comment. Great job. When I click Submit, it'll be pasted into the document. So now students can see both sets of their rubric marks, all within the same Google Doc. Let's jump over into Drive and see where these files are stored. Back in your Drive, if you search for Doctopus data, there is a hidden file called Doctopus data files. If I open that up, I have Gubrick audio files, and here are my different versions that I've saved for Jenny. So this will become a cumulative list. Now, as a word of warning, do not mess with any of these data files. It will mess things up. So if that's a little beyond you, just leave it alone, but just to let you know they are in your drive. And even if I go in and I open up one of these to double check, if I click on the sharing button, great job. I can see that it has been shared with Jenny. She can view it and I am the owner. And that's a quick walkthrough of Gubrick and the assessment features, including audio comments that are now built right into the Gubrick web app. Remember, if you have any questions at all, please be sure to check out the Doctopus community on Google+, and also the New Visions Cloud Lab website where you can get all kinds of information and links to other tutorials on these and other add-ons produced by New Visions for Public Schools, as well as Andrew Stillman. Let me know if you have any questions, and please be sure to like and share this video if you think it will be helpful for others. See ya!